Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at how we can create this golden filmic kind of look. And I will be using my Pro Power Grade in my Visionary Power Grades pack. So if you haven't watched that video of how I create the whole Power Grade yet, I do hope that you can go over there and have a quick watch and build out the note tree. But if you don't want to build it yourself, you can also purchase it with my link. And I will be using that Power Grade for all my future videos as well so that I can show you how I approach this type of grades in a very efficient and logical manner. So let's jump into the video. I have my clip here loaded up in the color tab and also my power grades in the power grade gallery, which is our power grade albums. So I have the pro, advanced and beginner. For this clip today, let's try to use the pro. All right, so I can just middle mouse click on this thumbnail and then the note tree will be applied to my clip. So same as any grade, the first thing that we have to do is color manage this clip. So we have to know what kind of camera and also the color space that this camera was shooting in, what type of lock space it is. So in my IDT, which is my input device transform, there is a CST effect applied. So you can open up the effects palette and look at what's being done. So in here, I have my input color space, which is set to default, which is use timeline and also input gamma default going into the Vinci white gamut. So this is part of the pro workflow that we are using, which is the Vinci white gamut to standardize the adjustments that we make down the line. So this clip was shot on a Sony Burano, which is in Sony s 3 S Gamma 3 Cine. So for my input color space, I'm going to set this to S Sony s Gamma 3 Cine and input gamma Sony S log tree. And I'm not done yet for the color management because I have to jump into my ODT. So before I jump into ODT, there, if you guys watch my another video as well, where I explain the issue when you're using Sony S log tree in the Winchy Right Gamut, there's a color shift. So you have to turn on this the Winchy Right Gamut to Sony S log tree node in order to bring it from DaVinci back into Sony as log tree. And then in the ODT, you bring it from Sony as log tree, as gamma tree Cine, as log tree, back to Rex 709. So we have to do this. If you don't know why, then you can have a look at this video. So if you follow the color management workflow, my IDT, I'm going from Sony as log tree to DaVinci right gamut. And then DaVinci right gamut back into Sony. And then for my ODT, I'm going Sony to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, which is our output color space for displays. Once we have done our color management, what we will see is more or less what the director or the DP was looking at on the day of the shooting itself. So the whole purpose of this color management is to get us to this very good start before we start tweaking and pushing the colors ourselves. So another important thing that you have to take note of when you are doing a grade like this is you have to know what is your end point, what is the end result that you are going for. And in this film, it's good that the director has a reference for us, which is over here. So you can drag any reference from your desktop or from any folder. You can drag it directly into your stills album and it will be imported over here where you can wipe the still by clicking on this image wipe. You can have a reference comparison, or you can also put it side by side with the split screen. So you split between still images. So you can see both images at the same time. So on the right is where we are heading and on the left is where we are now. So by looking at our scopes, we can see that on the left, it reflects our viewer. Okay. So on the left, our blacks are very high. That's the first thing that I noticed. The blacks are very high compared to our crushed blacks right now. And then for the highlights, everything is also very pushed down, which is more or less where we have them right now as well. So in terms of tonal range, I guess the only adjustments, the big adjustment that we have to make is to our blacks, which is to lift it everything up, right? And by looking at the viewer, another thing that we can see is that on the left on our clip is very saturated and on the right, it's more desaturated. So if it's very saturated, what you see is orange, right? So we have a very poppy orange and on the right in our reference, it's more of a goldish sort of tone. So by explaining it like that, you can see that to achieve this golden tone, 
what we have to do is to desaturate orange or more or less yellowish orange so that we can achieve a very golden overall tone. And that actually took me a while to figure out because golden is not a hue on its own. It's yellowish orange on a lower luminance and also lower saturation. Now that we are clear on where we are heading, let's push the image or push our grid to this reference over here. And I can just continue grading with the viewer being side by side like this if I have enough space to adjust my notes. All right. So after our color management in the IDT, let's move on down the pipeline with our highlight preservation. So most of the time, I'll just turn this on because you won't see much of an effect unless the image is super, super bright. So this is already targeting a bit of the highlights in some areas. If I turn on my highlight mode with shift H, you can see that. So it's targeting just these brightest areas only, which I kind of like, all right? And then the next note is skin softening, which I don't think will give that much of an effect in this video. So I'm just going to leave that off. And moving on to our primaries. So the biggest difference between these both images right now, I think is we have to lift up the blacks over here, but let's not try to target the blacks right off the bat. Let's try to lift everything up and then try to compress it down later on. So recently I've been experimenting with the HDR global exposure, right? Because this kind of give sort of like a more well-rounded effect. You can test that out in a grayscale RAM if you want. I already tested that and it gives a nicer effect in terms of raising the exposure. So another way I can raise the exposure is also in the raw tab because this was shot on a real cinema camera with all the metadata attached. But for most of my grades right now, I'm switching over to the HDR global view and raising the exposure there. So I'm just going to raise it a little bit like this so I don't target things so quickly. We want to work from macro level adjustments to micro level adjustments, right? So whatever you can fix on a wider scale, we will do that first. So after I'm done with phrasing the exposure here, I'm going to jump back into my primaries and see if I want to make any white adjustments. So now the brighter areas are looking a bit too bright. I'm going to go into my gain, which controls the brighter areas more effectively. That's how I would put it, right? And drop it down. So I'm dropping down my gain to 0.85-ish, right? And we can see the before when it's super, super dark like this and the after when it's a little bit flatter, right? And you can use other techniques as well to achieve this kind of uh, adjustments to the exposure. The way that I did it was the most logical to me. As long as the end result is where we want it to be, whatever works for you, just do it. So now I'm quite happy with the overall exposure. So let's adjust the next thing that is standing out the most, which is the saturation of both. So to do that, I'm going to go into my primaries and by default, you will see there's a drop in saturation because I use a HSV saturation, which is a subtractive saturation. I can also turn this off if that doesn't work for me, right? You can see that it gives sort of like a flatter effect, which actually works in this case. So I think instead of reducing the saturation in our primaries, we can also turn off this HSV set if it works for this grid, right? So now it's looking a lot closer. And after I'm happy with where the saturation sits right now, I'm going to use my curves to make a tonal adjustment. So I use the curves with this thing called editable splines, right? So if you turn on editable splines, you will see that there are handles that will appear on whatever point you make in the curve. So again, in the curves node, there is already a default curve made with the editable splines, which gives you a smoother curve. So if you're using the pro power grid, you can just turn this on and see what kind of effect it gives. So if I'm looking at my waveform right here and I turn it on and off, you see that it gives that faded shadow, which is sort of the direction that I'm going to right now. Right. 
So I don't even have to make an adjustment because the default adjustment is already made very nicely. And I don't have to worry about my highlights as well because it kind of just get lifts up a little bit, right? Most of the effects we see is at the shadow. So you have a very nice cutoff at the shadow right around the three IRE point right here. So with that more or less done, I can basically move on to my secondaries, which is starting from the vignette. And in this vignette node, I have a preset made already using the power window, right? I can toggle it on like this. So you can see that there's a power window with a vignette built in in the gamma. And I guess you can turn it on and off and see whether it works or not. And I think it works very nicely on this shot without making any other adjustments as well. So everything's built in, everything's super quick. You don't even have to toggle the adjustments within these nodes itself, right? And I'm not going to make any specific secondaries adjustment. As long as this shot matches to the next, then I'm good to go. So I'm just going to move on to our look, right? And here is where we can really push in that golden look and really sell it. So to push a golden look, like I mentioned just now, we have to use yellow or orange, depending on how golden we want it to be, and then desaturate it. And I'm going to push that yellow using my gain because the gain is what is going to affect the atmosphere of the scene because the gain affects the brighter areas more drastically than the midtones and the shadows. So using the gain, I'm going to push it towards the yellow. And don't be afraid to push too much at this moment because later on we are going to be desaturating everything. So it's different from pushing a little bit and you still have sort of like this. You still have a lot of the original colors present, such as the little bit of green over here and a little bit of red in her lips. So if you really want to get the go look, you have to push until everything looks go, right? Sort of over here. Okay. And then I'm going to desaturate it. So let's see 30%. Nope, too much. So I'm going to go up to 45 Okay, right now it's more or less at the saturation level that I want, but I think we have to push a little bit more reddish to match the reference. So I'm going to push it up. I'm pushing it on my micro panel, right? So that it gets a little bit reddish. Okay, somewhere over here. And then for the saturation, let's drop it a little bit more, 37.5. I'm a little bit OCD, so I'm going to go by the numbers instead of twisting the knob. Okay, so I think we are more or less there. The only thing that we have to adjust right now to match the reference is to dim down the highlights again. So I'm going to go back into my curves, into my custom curve, highlight, and let's dim that down. Dim it down a bit and using the spline, if I drag it out, I can brighten it back. Something like this, right? So going back into the look node, if I turn this on and off, everything goes into this very goldenish tone looking at the skin tones over here. So I'm pretty happy with what we have here, which is this golden look, if I turn it on and off. But if you look at the window over here, which is sort of white-ish, and we can look at her laptop, which is also white, and it's not affected by that gold color. So if you are really picky about that, we can do an adjustment using our qualifier and turn off hue and saturation because we don't want it to be too much of a micro level adjustment. We want it to affect the whole image. We can only use the luminance and we can take out this brightest area by dropping down the highlight, right? Until the window area is not being selected. So if I turn on my highlight mode, you can see that the window here is being excluded. And now it's really pixel-ish. So we can soften it a bit using the high soft, right? Let's go for eight. And we can also add a bit of blur radius and a bit of denoise. This is just for safety, right? So now it's a very soft selection of this window here. 
and it's being excluded from the adjustment that we made. So remember the three things I mentioned about achieving this go tone. Number one, the yellow hue. Number two, the desaturation. And number three, the drop in luminance. So in order to drop the luminance, of course, we can go into our curves, into our hue versus luminance and drop it there. But now in DaVinci, we have a stronger tool, which is our density tool in our color slice, right? So if you're using the Pro Note tree, you can also see that there is a color slice density built into this node with a default adjustment made to drop that density, all right? So before, after, before, after. And now we have this very goldenish look. And let's see if there is any other adjustments that we want to be made. And I think we can drop the saturation a little bit more because it's looking too saturated right now. And I'm going to go into my saturation, drop it down to 35. And I'm going to make some minor adjustments, maybe 32. Yes, 32 works better. So I can just put it side by side and do an image wipe so that they match each other nicely. And another thing I'm seeing, just like a finishing touch, is back into the primaries, I'm going to drop the tint a little bit because pushing green also helps with that golden look because it doesn't make it look too magenta, which is not the direction that we're going. Right, so you can see that their shirt, more or less the same, skin tones are also more or less the same. Right, and we get to replicate this reference that we have right here. So just as a finishing touch, we can also add some film grain. Let's go into our effects, and this is a custom film grain I already built in. And the rest, I don't really have to touch it at all. And I have my finish look. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is my first video for 2025. And also about my online course, I have full intentions of upgrading it or adding new topics to it this year. So please be patient with me on it. I'm working very hard because I'm also working on real projects with real clients. And I want to give you guys authentic lessons that you can really implement into your workflow. So. I have to be both a professional and also a content creator in order to deliver that, right? So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.